I'm going to fix the headlight. I'm going to fit a voltmeter to the ignition switch module. I need to repair the ignition switch module. I've been having a look at this original headlight off the 94 bike. It wasn't working. Turns out the globe's okay in it. The problem was the actual globe holder had an issue where the negative wire, the black one, wasn't grounding on the socket properly. It was like a dry joint, high impedance. I've had that all apart, soldered the wire, had to cut the bloody plastic socket in half to be able to get through and solder the black wire to the uh, metal frame of the, of the light bulb socket. But after doing that, well, that's why the black wire has been shortened up there, I've got the globe and the socket working. This, that's the condition of this. I think that bump in the bottom, that's a, um, the spring is for uh, tilting the headlight up and down. That's the pivot point. I think I can make that now work, but uh, I don't know whether I'm wasting my time with this because the actual body itself has got the, bro the bottom is broken out of it. It's got a uh, rusty bolt through the bottom there and a bit of uh, dodgy metal inside there that holds that bracket on. You can see the condition of the rest of it. It's just a typical chook shit part. I'm going to have a go at fixing that. I think I might be able to use some of my Plasti Bond Plasti, plastic uh, bonding material that may glue the bottom of that light in securely enough so it doesn't need a bracket. Might need some formal reinforcing, I don't know, but I'm sure I can do a better job than that. That's a job I'm going to continue on with. I was able to buy a new three pin connector socket for these wires on the bike itself. The three spade terminals are there and I can I put some uh, heat shrink over them a while back because the socket the, the actual housing of the socket was completely crumbling away sun damaged I suspect that was just to protect those wires but I think I can take that uh, heat shrink off and slip those terminals now into the new uh, three terminal socket connector put one on the headlight and, and get it going. Key switch module there, it's falling apart. It needs sticking up. I'm gonna put a voltmeter in the end of it like I did on one of my other bikes. I've also got the switch for the thematic fan. It needs to go up on the handlebar somewhere. Now it's got a dodgy joint in it down here which I will redo with a better inline joint, properly heat shrunk, so you wouldn't know it was a join there. And that will fix that as well. So just some electrical things to uh, uh, do, the things that I've added to the list and will get done. I've been working on fixing up this headlight. I put a new connector on the wiring, put some heat shrink over the, actually extended the black wire that was short, heat shrink over it and put a new connector on. Cleaned out all the internals. I super glued this uh, base part in. Thought, well, that was going to be okay. So I was mounting this headlight back to the bike. I had tested it with the wiring connections and it was working. When I was doing the final clip on to the bike, I put a bit more load on it and this broke out again. So I don't know how many other people have experienced this with this type of headlight. For a lot of people, we just throw away and get a LED style light instead, and I could do that. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this back in and, and I didn't actually use the plastic bond material I was talking about earlier. To, hold, to try and hold this and uh, reinforce this on the inside. I'm going to do that this time and see how that goes. 
I might have to rough up some of the edges on the inside of this to uh, get a good bond between the plastic and the uh, plasti bond material. But um, look, the super glue seemed to hold pretty well. I thought it was going to do the job, but uh, I might super glue that back in and then do the plastic bond as well on the inside. The rest of the light is uh, operational, so I'll take it apart again and fix this current problem. I have mounted the little ignition box up in my milling machine. I'll step back and show you the bigger picture. And I've milled this hole in the end of it with this little three millimeter end mill. The aim is to install a little voltmeter that I bought from Banggood for $6 in that hole. I initially drew a pencil line around that there to try and get a center point. I drew, I drew, did that from just putting the nut on the surface and using a pencil to draw around it, trying to get it concentric with the radius on the box itself. And I then used that line to line up my cutter. I uh, took smaller cuts initially and worked out how much I needed to adjust effectively the centre position of that circle to come out to that line. Now I've just used the um, calipers here to measure the diameter of this voltmeter and it's about 29 millimetres. I've currently got the radius of this hole uh, the toolpath radius is just 10 millimetres, so it's it's 20 millimetres plus the diameter of that tool, which is 3 millimetres. So that hole currently will be 23 millimetre hole, needs to come out to 29 millimetres. For example, you take 29, subtract 3, which is the tool diameter, bring comes back to 26. 26 you then halve is 13 so the offset of this tool needs to be 13 millimeters from the center of the hole it will cut a cut a circle that's 26 millimeters in diameter or the center the tool path will be 26 millimeters in diameter plus the three millimeters or, a, or one and a half on each side of that tool path will make 29 millimeters so it's currently set to do as I said 10 there's the last two commands there x 10 y 0 radius 10 the first thing I've got to do is move the tool across to x 13 as the starting point and you'll see that that will move fraction. We then go up and copy this instruction. Instead of 10 we're making it 13 because we're starting at 13 we're going to minus 13 in the first 180 degrees and then we go across and make the radius 13. Now I'm going to start the spindle here in the forward direction press the start button and come back here where I'm going to wind the table up and plunge that tool into the plastic there Just starting to cut a little bit there. I'm not going to take it all in one go. I'm going to effectively check myself first. Come back to the machine here and press enter. 
and then you'll see the handles on the mill moving by themselves tracing out a new tool path there as it works its way around now that instruction I've just typed only takes it halfway around the circle I'm going to go up and uh, change the next half of the circle is back to positive 13 so it's just a matter of moving that minus sign and pressing enter and you'll see the tool has come past it's done the first 180 degrees but we'll be starting to execute the next instruction now and complete the next 180 degrees and come back to the X13, Y0 position. While this is happening, the pencil line is being removed. And yeah, the, the, we've gone from 10 to 13 in radius, so it's taking a full width of cut and it's, it's going to finish in a moment back at the X13 Y zero point and it's finished that cut now. Now I just repeat that um, a couple more times to go round the circle and cut all the way through the material and then I'll have a 29 millimetre hole. That's my 29 millimeter hole completed. Uh, I've moved the hole 200 millimeters away from the cutting tool or the zero point of the cutting tool. Before I remove it from the mill, I have fed that through to see that it fits neatly in that hole and it does. So there's, I can remove the setup from the mill not being concerned that I'm going to lose my zero point. So that's been a successful operation. Uh, it took a little bit, it cut a lot nicer hole than you'd try and drill or file out, but you can drill and file it out. I think that's what I did with my uh, other one. So I'll uh, remove it from the machine now. This voltmeter looks like it's designed to go there. Its radius or diameter of it is just small enough to fit on the end radius of this little box and inside the key switch and the voltmeter both fit back to back like that. I think the actual spade terminals that go on the voltmeter may need to be either bent to come out at right angles. I haven't got the uh, reverse and neutral block which is sitting there in place. The actual uh, voltmeter will connect to the wires going to the reverse and neutral lighting. It will come on and display voltage when you're in neutral because that's the only time an earth or a ground is actually applied to this ignition. All the other wires associated with this ignition I believe are, uh, are active positive switch wires so the only time a negative signal comes to this block is when you're in neutral and that's fine because you're only wanting to look at the voltage usually when you're starting the bike or when you're sitting and idling and wanting to know whether the bike is charging or the uh, how much drain the headlight might have or the thematic fan is drawing on the system you're not going to be needing to see a voltage when you're screaming down the road look this little module has got a chunk missing out of this side of it and it's got pieces missing out the base of it is broken uh, so I've only got about half the base 
uh, all, they're all pieces that need further attention and uh, I will probably be moulding those pieces up using my uh, plastic bond bob that uh, I've shown before. Well I've got the voltmeter fitted to the side of this and the key back in. Uh, I've still got this big strap around it because the bottom of this is all smashed out. Big piece missing there, piece missing from around the key. Yeah, so there's a chunk missing out of there. I'm looking to build this section here that's missing up with some bog. I'm going to go and check the whole unit as it stands with this cable tie on it to see whether it's all working and then it won't matter so much if the bog gets into places it shouldn't be like if I put some in and around there it's going to get on the key switch itself and get in the back where it shouldn't be when really the only part that should bond to is this end here where my tip of my finger is and this end around here because it's just a thin strip missing out of there but it'd be nice to fill that hole with bog and build up the rest of it with bog but uh, I've then got to find some way of holding it together because this cable tie is doing all the work at the moment. I've run the two wires to the voltmeter back into join into the loom on the blue connector there. I join back about where my thumb is under the uh, insulation where a red and a black wire I joined into the positive and earth wire that the neutral light uh, feeds a neutral light. I'll go and plug all this into the bike and see whether I get a voltage reading when I turn the ignition on and it's in neutral so if it does work I might come back and start just filling the back of that with bog. Well it's not pretty, I could put a little bit more filler on, there's a little bit of a hollow there. It's a bit like polishing a turd. If I wanted to be perfect there's a little bit of a hollow there and a bit of a hollow back there in the bog. I've uh, given the bog a bit of a file, um, hollowed out these channels to try and match roughly across the other side where the piece was complete. Uh, there's a corner missing off here. It's not a nice sharp point like this side. Where the uh, screws went through previously, I used a uh, skewer down through the bog when it was setting and to pick up those screw points and put the bog around the skewers and pulled them out before it was dry. Uh, so those screw holes go right through just like the third one, third original one, which I don't have a screw for at the moment. The whole thing seems to be sort of holding together because there's bogs on there, which means the bog's sort of gluing it together. It's going to be a bugger when it needs to come apart. It'll be interesting where the bog breaks when it's coming apart and I'll have pieces of roughly shaped bog to put back in place if I, ever, if I have to take it apart. If I had to change a globe, a neutral light or a reverse light or, or change the key switch again, then breaking this apart is going to be messy. But in the meantime, I've got that voltmeter wired in and it's, this all should just work. There's no extra cables coming down to plug in because the uh, negative and positive wire for the voltmeter I just picked up off the neutral harness. I'm going to go out and try it on the bike. It should be okay.
neutral lights working, key switch is working, bolt meter is working. With the headlight on I'm getting 12.8. Let's put the lights on. With the lights off, 13.4. These are all numbers that are handy to know that she's charging. It's running at the moment, so it's charging. With the headlights on, you see it drop back in voltage. The lights are shining up there on the Voltage drops back to 12 point something. That's the reverse light working. Uh, I couldn't do that while I was sitting running here. I'd want to take off. So my two lights here are working. The voltmeter's working. Key switch is working. The uh, headlight is mounted and hopefully sturdy enough. I've got the uh, thematic fan, I didn't try that while we were pissing around a moment ago. You can hear that coming on and off. Uh, what's that do to the voltage? 12.4 with nothing on. 11.3, so it drags the battery voltage down. The only dicky thing left is the high-low switch on the headlights is uh, a bit flaky and it doesn't switch properly every time. I've got another one of those off the 89 bike which I may swap out if it bugs me too much. All right, well that ticks a number of electrical items off the list and the horn works. I think I've shown that. I've mounted the horn button there. Uh, I mounted the thematic fan button under there. Probably the horn button is handy to be able to get to with your left hand. The thematic fan button, not so important. Another thing that's going to bug me with this bike is the steering column has play backwards and forwards in it. I don't know whether you can see that. It's got a loose upper bearing. It will bug me. I'm trying to get a picture where you can see it. You can certainly feel it. Another issue that might get addressed at some stage. Okay, it's time to wake up and get out to your shed and have some fun.